I'm going to talk about the five things that your uh, dahlia tubers will need at this stage of growth. So in the early stage you've uh, put them into pots uh, uh, around the uh, 1st of April or so and you uh, need to look after them so that they will um, put shoots out and that they will remain healthy until they're big enough to transplant out into soil. So. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about the five things that they need at this stage. So, uh, <coughs> item one is the medium, um, the medium that you plant them in. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, pros and cons, and uh, uh, but the principles of um, medium is that it should be uh, free draining, and the reason for that is that you don't want your tuber to stand in in uh, water, which has got no oxygen, it's got no air you know, with it. So the idea is to have uh, a damp medium which has got some air in it as well. And the way that we ensure that is that we, uh, we make sure that it's free draining. So for if you're going to use peat free, and uh, one of the problems with peat free, well there's a number of problems, <coughs> one of the problems is that it's expensive. So um, for the bulk of our uh, dahlias that we planted, and I've got a video on this, um, I've used uh, some peat-free compost to give some aeration, but I've used um, a sort of second time round topsoil, which uh, I mixed in, <coughs> and uh, uh, that will um, uh, not be nearly as costly as buying uh, bags of uh, peat-free compost, and it's quite adequate. So what your soil does not need is uh, much in the way of nutrition, because at this stage the dahlia is getting its nutrition from the uh, tuber. Um, uh, when I uh, potted up the uh, uh, bulk of the dahlias I did um, uh, put some bone meal in but that's not for this stage of growth really that's for a later stage once the uh, tuber is becoming depleted and the plant is at that stage um, uh, photosynthesizing making lots of protein and uh, putting leaves on and uh, will require some nutrition of some sort in order to uh, allow those processes to occur. And item two that your uh, tubers will need is water. And uh, the issue about water is that uh, it will allow the tuber to get started. Um, and of course, once roots are uh, put out, the function of the roots is to get water. So um, uh, the right amount of water is critical to the development of your uh, dahlias. Um, but there's a big catch, and that is that uh, if you put too much water into the medium um, and leave it um, uh, soggy uh, with no air pockets, then uh, this is risking rot. And certainly if you uh, water your dahlias and then uh, they uh, don't get started quickly enough because the temperature is too low, then there's a big risk of rot. So. Uh, uh, tubers that are wet and cold are likely to rot. And so the third item is heat. So in order to get the physiology started, uh, uh, daily tubers will require a certain temperature uh, below 10 degrees C and they will be dormant. dormant. And uh, we've talked about storage and uh, all those things. Um, above 10 degrees C uh, they will start to uh, turn on their uh, internal metabolism and will put shoots out. The optimum temperature is between 18 and 20 degrees centigrade and in order to get that you either have an awful lot of good luck with the weather or else some form of uh, artificial temperature. So these ones here, my little precious guys, um, are on a heat mat. And I've got the heat mat set to 20 degrees. So the mat is 20 degrees and the thermostat, the sensor is, is, uh, is underneath there so that the air temperature will be somewhat less. In this case it's, it's only 16 air temperature. Well, the fourth thing that your dahlias will need, one they do put shoots out and you begin to get leaves uh, is they will require light and um, uh, if it's early on in the season and there isn't enough daylight then the only way to get that is artificial light so I've got these precious ones here and my seedlings 
um, under LED lights. We're just getting used to using LED lights now. Previously we used fluorescent which are um, much too inefficient now to consider. So uh, we're using LEDs and hopefully the right um, wavelengths of light will be present. In the normal way of things, without artificial light, if you're just uh, starting your dahlias um, in a, a greenhouse or polytunnel, unheated, uh, then the light from April onwards, here in the UK anyway, is, um, is adequate. Uh, you, there's no hurry and once the uh, leaves do come, there's, uh, as the days lengthen, there's more and more light available so that uh, they'll be fine for planting out in uh, uh, mid-May or June. Uh, but if you're in a rush or you, uh, and you want to get things started and, uh, early, um, then artificial light is the way. And the fifth thing, the last thing that your dahlias will require is protection. So that you should be wary, you should watch the weather forecast and you should make sure that uh, if there is frost in the forecast that you're taking appropriate action. And uh, so long as the temperature doesn't get too low, then horticultural fleece, this stuff is uh, perfectly adequate for protecting from frost. Let's have a look at some of these. These are in the small polytunnel. Each variety sort of switches on and starts to put its shoots out uh, in its own time. None of these are going yet. These were on the 2nd of April and it's now the 14th of April, so 12 days. And none of them showing signs at this moment of putting shoots out. Okay, so this is the first one I can see which has got some shoots starting. This is Nuit Det. And hopefully you can just see the little red tips there. The shoots starting up. So that's reassuring. I'll keep them covered until their uh, sh shoots are properly out and I'm sure that this, um, the forecast is good and there's no frost forecast and then I'll let the leaves see the light properly although the uh, fleece is quite good for letting light through. And here are the rest of them in the uh, larger polytunnel, again covered with horticultural fleece. I monitor the temperature uh, continually and we've had temperatures going down to about minus three or so in the last two weeks. And this fleece is enough to protect them. It gets quite warm in the polytunnel during the day. And this fleece will trap that warm air around the pots and protect them from a degree of frost going down perhaps to minus four, something like that, for one night. Any more than that, and prolonged frost particularly, then we'd have to take other uh, steps to protect our dahlias, which basically means bringing them in and bringing them indoors. There's about a hundred or so here, 120 or so here. So it's not a small task. We tend to keep our fingers crossed that we don't get a prolonged uh, frost of that nature which would uh, see off the tubers. So let's have a look at these guys. One thing I do get, uh, reusing soil. Uh, I told you in the video that we reuse soil and mix it with uh, fresh uh, peat-free compost is that we get, we we get weeds germinating which is no big deal, but from the seeds, nice bit of growth starting there. This one here has actually got some leaves starting up. 
a great time of the year this to see life and germination in progress there's some more some more We've had a visit from our worst enemy, a snail. You can see the slime there. Nothing for them to damage just at the moment. But once the leaves emerge, that's one of the challenges, is to, is to keep the uh, slugs and snails away from your lovely, juicy, fresh leaves. I'm going to do some videos about just that problem. Okay, so there's all our dahlias off and running, all doing pretty well, quite pleased with those. So there we are, the five things you should be thinking about after potting up your dahlia tubers. So I hope you enjoyed uh, that video and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Bye for now.